for the technology threat and China. The CFO of Huawei out on bail this week. She was arrested, you know, on charges that she violated U.S. trade law. Huawei is one of the largest smartphone makers in the world. Joining us right now is Herbold Group Managing Director and former Microsoft COO, Bob Herbold. Bob, it's good to see you. Thanks so much for joining us. Hi, Maria. Your reaction to what took place over the Huawei news, you know, initially we thought, oh, it's about Iran sanctions, but then we learned that this is a company that the Chinese government has been using for espionage. And if that's true, uh, uh, that company is in serious trouble. I mean, uh, they are the big kahuna relative to the cellular tower equipment business. Uh, they are the leader globally in patents. They took over that lead in uh, 2017. Uh, they've been heavily involved in setting the standards for 5G technology, uh, along with uh, Ericsson and Nokia and Samsung and Qualcomm. So this is a company that is critical to the, uh, the, the smartphone cellular business. And uh, the more we learn about the involvement of China, the more worrisome it is. And that's why you see governments backing away. So. They have a huge trust problem right now, and they're not handling it well. Uh, and uh, and that's just a critical issue for for the technology industry. Yeah, and I'm glad you mentioned 5G, because with 5G, the stakes are even higher. Look, you're a former leader at Microsoft. We had on Steve Ballmer recently. We have Brad Smith, president currently at Microsoft, to talk about the China issue. You probably saw it firsthand, right, where 90% of the companies in China use the Microsoft platform, but only 1% pay for it. <laughs> it's true. It's a rugged country in which to do business. Uh, you'd think they'd change their ways and become a full participant in the global economy, but they uh, continue to want to want to do it the, the so-called Chinese way. And uh, I think they're going to run into some major problems as they try to pursue uh, leadership in the technology sector on a global basis. And I think Huawei is uh, example number one. Hey, Bob, Mike Block here. So what can, what can the U.S. do and what can companies here do to not throw the baby out of the bathwater, but rather protect their IP, but also be able to do business? Can technology itself be utilized to help enforce um, at the company level these, these sort of these IP, uh, you know, the, the legitimacy of, of, of intellectual property here? Very much so, and uh, uh, frankly, the technology companies involved in this business need to play much stronger roles. Uh, you know, we have a problem in the U.S. If you go back to Bell Labs, where a lot of this technology was originally developed, that became Lucent, that got purchased by Alcatel, Alcatel gets purchased by Nokia, and all of a sudden you look around and say, wow, there really isn't a strong player in that sector right now uh, from a technology standpoint. So. We have to become uh, much uh, more of a strength in this area, and it requires a lot of support from the U.S. government to, uh, to make this happen. But uh, we have Qualcomm, who's a major player in terms of the handset itself, but relative to cellular towers, uh, we're not strong right now. I was, Bob, I was going to ask you at Stegen McDowell, what specifically should the government be doing? Because we're watching, say, the social media space and the online advertising space dominated by just a few players that have gotten bigger and bigger and bigger through acquisitions like a Facebook or even a Google. How can the government help or how should the government intervene in these tech industries? Well, I think the most important thing is tech talent, okay? The, the fact is we do a lot of things to discourage the foreign student here's here at our finest universities getting educated. And so if you look back to 2011, 45 percent of Chinese students upon graduation were going back to China. Today that number is 80 percent. Why is that? Well, we continue to make it very difficult to get the right visa. We continue to make it very difficult to uh, find a job to stay here. In fact, uh, the government's floating a lot of policies that say after a year, if you're a computer science graduate, uh, in fact, we want you out of here by a year. Uh, so it's, we're doing the wrong things relative to uh, the immigration issue. The immigration issue is so screwed up because on the high end, we should be luring these people here and encouraging them to stay, the, the talented people. And so we have a, a tech talent problem that 
that is number one in my mind. Secondly, we need to encourage companies to do the right thing from a technology standpoint. You can do that in a lot of different ways. Relative to the social media folks, they're in for heavy weather. Uh, they haven't been fessing up to users uh, just exactly what they're doing with their information. And sooner or later, the governments around the world are going to say, hey, people need to opt in or opt out right up front. That's the only way that you can make it legit that these people are participating in what you're doing with their data. Yeah, we agree with you. We agree with you, Bob. We talk about that every morning. Do you think more regulation is on the way then? I do, relative to the social media world. Yeah. Bob, it's good to have you on the show this morning. Thanks so much. Thank you. Bob Herbold joining us there.